Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese, and today we're going to put your craft supplies to good use in the creation of lots of really cool stocking stuffers. Now, the one that I want to start with are this grouping you can see of candles. Now, I've got candles that are actually real candles and then the faux candles that are battery operated flames if you're going to be making this for kids. Either way, I've decorated them two different ways. One style I've simply taken, if you look at this one as an example, I've taken a rhinestone sticker and I've, I have several sitting on the table here. They're already self-adhesive. All you do is peel off the backing, place them onto the candle, and then I kind of roll them back and forth like this to get really good adhesion. I let it set overnight so it sets up like this. And then if there's any spot that wants to come loose, if it's a really you know, big curved candle. Every once in a while, I'll go back with those little glue dots and stick them on a few of the ends. And you can see how you can do hearts, all kinds of fun designs. Here um, are snowflakes, lots of cool things to do with candles. The second option is to decorate the candle with a photo. And when I turn the candle, in this case, since it's a flameless candle, I would turn it on. And you want the flame to illuminate the photo. So it's important that the photo be see-through. So this particular thing you want to start, what I did was I put the photo in the copier, but instead of putting copy paper, I put vellum, which you just bought at Staples. You just buy the vellum and sheets that's meant to go through your copier. And you'll take, I've got, I've done it several times. We've got lots of choices. I think I'm going to take this one of Kate and her grandfather. And I'll just take all you need to do is just <clears throat> trim it down so that it fits the candle size, wrap it around. Like I said, no adhesive. The only adhesive is going to be washi tape that you use to overlap and stick to the candle here and overlap and stick to the candle here. And that quick and easy, you have a really cool stocking stuffer. That might be even you know, higher status than a stocking stuffer, but it's a small enough size that it will work well in a stocking stuffer. So when you go back and you look at one that's finished, once again, here is the washi tape that's holding it down with the vellum hearts that are, and her name that's been added, which are also vellum stickers, and then the photo itself. Really fun and easy and cool. The next thing I want to show you that's handy size to fit into a stocking is fun jewelry. And I've made these for Quincy and Addison, my niece's little girls, who are five and seven. So if you look here, you can see I've used the Scrabble tiles just out of a Scrabble game. If you go to garage sales, it's a real find when you find any of the Scrabble games because I use these wood tiles in my scrapbook projects all the time. But in this case, I'm going to bring these up so I can show you. What I've done is I've just gone to the bead shop or the bead section of the hobby store and this particular element here is called a bale. And all it is is just the metal part. You put a dab of glue on the back side of this and it allows you to fasten any number of things. And now you've got something that you can use to attach the, the necklace itself. Here, this one, I've just used ball chain. And you can see that I have red ball chain. For Quincy, I have purple ball chain. The ball chain is available tons of places. If you go to the big box hardware stores, home improvement stores, I'm not sure if they use it for lighting or not, but they carry, you can see here, I got all these at um, Home Depot. And then in the jewelry section of the Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Joann's, the craft stores, they all seem to carry not only the large, a whole spool of this, I use it so much I bought the whole spool, but they'll carry these little individual, just blank little necklace things like this. The one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the width of the balls on the ball chain will fit through whatever size bale you select. These bales come in lots of sizes. You want to make sure, for instance, I can see that this, the balls on this are probably too large to fit through this particular bale. So whichever one you buy first, whether it's the bale or whether it's the ball chain, take it with you when you buy the second one. And that way you can make sure that it will fit inside. The next thing I want to show as a stocking stuffer are erasers. You can buy regular plain erasers and really zhuzh them up, in this case, with rub-ons. Here you can see I've used the rub-ons that were from an old kit that I used to have on the Home Shopping Network, and I've rubbed on hearts and flowers. I'm going to do Quincy and Addison again. You can tell I'm getting ready to put things for, to do for them for Christmas. So I'm just going to take this rub-on sheet, and I'm, I'll use a, a wooden popsicle stick. I'm going to do 
Addison's initial. So I'll try to do this at an angle so that as I'm rubbing it on, it's, it's obvious and you can see it. But all I need to do, instead of rubbing it on paper, it's the exact same technique. It's just that you're rubbing it onto the eraser. And I was surprised how well it works and how, you know, the whole time the eraser is used, um, that embellishment, whatever you choose to put on there, will stay. So when I slide this off, any place, I usually slide it slowly so that I can go back and make sure while it's still in place, if there's some area that's not wanting to come loose, make sure. Then when I see that I've got it on there, I'll usually go back and really, sometimes I'll even put something back down over the top and rub it again to really make sure that it's going to be nice and strong. But how cool is that? So easy and so quick and just a great thing that you can slap into a stocking. Now, the last thing that I want to show you are notepads. Look here. You can see all of these different notepads. If you have access to a die cutting machine, whether you have one at home or if there is one at your kid's school or your grandkid's school, I used to be a teacher and we let any of the parents or grandparents, if they brought their own paper, we didn't care if they wanted to come and use the die cutting machine. So check around because the die cutting is what makes this go together so easily because they will align perfectly. We're going to look at making this one, but while I'm here, I want to show you. You can also decorate the top one with a photo. Or if you look down here, you can do your kids' initials. Lots of fun choices. What you need to make this work is just a stack of die cuts, and we're going to use padding compound and a paintbrush. So <clears throat> what I have, I used four sheets of that large 12 by 18 construction paper, and that allowed me to cut out about 30 of these, or 32, I think, of these um, fir tree shapes. I cut an additional one out of cardboard, and then I cut one out of white. I've gone ahead and I've decorated the top a little bit just by punching some holes. I use my 16th inch hole punch and my 8th inch hole punch to just create enough of a of a set of a feeling of snow falling so that when I place this on the top, you can see the green tree through. You do want, remember when it's die cut, because it's cut with the same tool, they're going to line up perfectly. So when you have them so that they're all aligned and you have a nice aligned shape, I just take a binder clip and let me get these lined up better. I take a binder clip. It is kind of important that you pick a spot to bind it that will work well. And I'll put some binding on this and I'll show you what I mean. I do put a bag or wax paper or tin foil on the bottom because it tends to want to pool at the bottom. But the, the um, padding compound comes, this is going to last you forever. I've had this for years and you can see I've hardly used any. But you're just going to take your paintbrush, put it in the padding compound, it looks like white glue and it dries clear like white glue, but it dries flexible. So it won't crack as you peel the pages off. All you need to do is pat it on and I get it nice and goopy. I'll probably do one more round of it. And I'm gonna show you, I have some on the top, which isn't gonna matter because I'm gonna go back. Like I said, it's just, if you've worked with white glue, you know that it's gonna dry clear. But see how there's some glue that's going to dry clear, but right now while it's wet, I can just do something like that and it's fine. I let it dry for about an hour and then I go back and I put another layer on there and that is it. I'll bring it back up and you can see all I've done is padded that section so that logically as you peel this off, you don't want to have something that's going to make it hard to peel the pages off when you're actually using it as a notepad. So, in case you were not aware, you can put all your craft supplies to really good use in the creation of tons of super stocking stuffers.